So you want to get that sweet, sweet Juju Shortbow. But you don't want to fight hundreds of tier 2 void glooms to unlock its requirement? Well today, I'm going to show you how cheap and easy it is to defeat the tier 3 void gloom Seron. A formerly formidable boss, but now just a joke that can speed your leveling process up by 4 times. When people think about the tier 3 void gloom Seron, they picture them as an unstoppable force, an overpowered god that ravages idiotic souls that try to apprehend them. Me? I think of them as a faster way to level up Enderman Slayer. If you ask anyone how to defeat the tier 3 Void Gloom Seraph, they're probably going to tell you to get 25,000 kills on your Final Destination armor, get Soul Flow, and use a Vorporal Katana. The problem about this setup is that it costs too much money and takes too much time to get that many kills on your armor. And if you're a lazy Iron Man gamer like me, you simply just don't want to do it. So that's why you use my method. Instead of using the conventional method of meleeing the boss, my method utilizes magic. This method also does not require any soul flow, and the kills on your armor don't have to be that high. You could probably get away with one piece 5,000 and all the others 10,000. But how is this possible? The tier 3 Void Gloom Seraph does so much damage. How could you beat the boss with only 5,000 to 10,000 kills on your armor? Well, the key to my method is the healing. This setup allows you to heal so much that even if the Void Gloom drops you super low, you'll be able to heal up all the way to full health in seconds. The best part is that the way we're healing is by life stealing, and by life stealing, we're not consuming any mana, allowing all our mana to go to damage so that we can defeat this boss very quickly. These are all the items you will need to fight the tier 3 Void Gloom Seraph. A heavy crystallized heart, a loving Final Destination chestplate with 10,000 at least kills on it, heavy Final Destination leggings with at least 10,000 kills on it, and heavy Final Destination boots with at least 10,000 kills on it. Your equipment will be full ender equipment. You need a summoning item, you need your aspect of the end or void, you need a powerful wand, your best zombie sword, a heroic zombie soldier cutlass with lifesteal 4, I will explain that later. And you need a fire veil wand. For your orb, you will want a mana flux power orb. Your pet will be an enderman that is rare, epic, or legendary with a bubble gum. Your power stone should be the sighted power stone with all of your tuning points onto defense. You need to have a god pot and your rabbit effect has to be turned off in the booster cookie menu. Basically, this setup allows you to use magic to defeat the tier 3 Void Gloom Seraph. This brings me to why we are using this abomination of a weapon, the Heroic Zombie Soldier Cutlass with Lifesteal 4. Let me explain. So, the reason why we are using this weapon specifically is because of its 100% attack speed. Since our crit chance is probably not going to be at 100%, that's why we're using Lifesteal 4 to lifesteal all of our HP back. But why aren't we using a strong weapon to do damage? Well, this is because we're not using melee damage to defeat this boss. We're using magic damage. So we need the fastest weapon we can get for a cheap price to be able to lifesteal all of our HP back. Why is this heroic and not any other reforge? Well, it's heroic because when we swap from our fire veil to our zombie soldier cutlass, we'll be doing more magic damage because of its heroic ability. Not to mention that this weapon also has an ability of love tap getting 10 HP back every single time we hit an enemy. On top of that, this weapon is only 10,000 coins on the auction house right now, and is a pretty common drop from dungeons. This is my usual hotbar setup, my key-binded zombie sword. We have my wand right next to my main weapon, my fire veil wand, mana flux, then my aspect of the end, which I don't really use, my necromancer sword, it can also be a summoning ring or your reaper scythe, and that is really everything you need. The Necromsa Sword is used to raise souls to break the Void Gloom Seraph's hit shield. But there's a weapon that is a fraction of the price of the Necromsa Sword that can also break the Void Gloom Seraph's hit shields as well. This weapon is a Hurricane Bow. The Hurricane Bow shoots 5 arrows. These 5 arrows break the Void Gloom Seraph's hit shields very fast. But the bad thing about using the Hurricane Bow is that it requires a lot more skill, as the Necromsa Sword is safer to use and is less time consuming. Try using a hurricane bow at the start. If it's too hard, maybe it's a good idea to invest in a necromancer sword. If you do decide to use a necromancer sword, the souls that are easiest to get and that qualify for this fight are these wither spectres. 
Now, I'm going to walk you guys through how a typical tier 3 Enderman boss fight will look like. There's the boss. Right when I spawned the boss, I put down my mana flux. Make sure your summons don't die. You gotta play it really safe because we're gonna need these guys three times. Just like I mentioned, we get rid of its first hit phase with the Necromancer Sword. Make sure you keep your summons alive because if they die, you will not have them for the rest of the fight. Just a quick tip, you don't need to despawn your summons when the hit phase ends because the Voidloom Seraph will recall them for you. Not killing them, but putting them back into your summoning item. We're getting everything back really fast. That's really cool. As you can see what I'm doing here, I'm swapping between my Fire Veil and spamming with my Zombie Soldier Cutlass so I can stay alive. <laughs> Usually, I play it safe and do one fire veil every 5 seconds until it runs out, and then I swap back to my fire veil. But sometimes, if I just want to end the fight quickly, I just stack a few fire veils and then go back to my zombie soul cut to do multiple fire veils worth of damage. If you want to keep it extra safe, be sure to keep a steady stream of healing from your wand. Next phase, get our summons on them. Good. After the second phase, the Voidum Seraph will start throwing down Yang Glyphs. Basically, they're just beacons that'll insta-kill you if you don't stand next to them in a few seconds. That's why I made you guys turn off Jump Boost. It helps getting to the Yang Glyphs faster and more efficient. You can also use your Aspect of the End or Void at this point to get to the beacons as fast as possible. <laughs> When you place down another Mana Flux when your old Mana Flux runs out, your mana is probably going to be on the low side. So you could just skip using a Fire Veil and just hit the Void Gloom for a couple of times to stall to get your mana back. Constantly use the wand. Alright, just getting down to its last phase. We're going to use our Witness Vectures. Get rid of that. You can see our mana flux. So this is the deadliest part. You want to look at the head. The heads when they stack up they do so much damage. As I just mentioned, the third stage of this boss fight is the hardest and most deadliest part of the boss fight. If you die here, I don't blame you. I died on this phase so many times. But the trick is to just look at every single head the boss throws down to avoid them stacking up and doing exponential damage. And that's how we take care of tier 3 Voidloom Seraph without using any soul flow or anything crazy like a giant sword. Here's some final tips I'll give to you before you attempt this boss. Make sure to always keep an eye on your health bar and your mana bar as these are super super important to keep track of and if you lose track of them you're either gonna die or you're just gonna run out of time to defeat the boss if you find out that you keep dying because you feel like you don't have enough ehp just use the adept power stuff and set all of your stats tuning to intelligence this way you'll still be able to do enough damage and have way more ehp if you still have trouble surviving this boss consider turning your chest plate from loving back to heavy and if you still can't survive, maybe it's because you're not utilizing your mana enough to heal, or if you're not life stealing correctly. If you don't want to spend money on a 5 million coin bubblegum on your non level 100 Enderman, then consider leveling up your alchemy, as that gives you more ability damage and more intelligence. And that is it for today's video. But you guys might be wondering, Sunbud, your last video didn't hit 2,000 likes. Why are you making this video? Well, guess what? I need content, okay? My next Divin Armor video is picking up quite a long time to make, so I thought you guys might like to see a video. If you guys have any more questions, just join my Discord and a link down in the description, and be sure to like and subscribe, because we're on the way to 5,000 subscribers. I hope you guys found this helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.